we've personally had a great time so far at KubeCon Europe. Uh, KubeCon Europe's observability day, to be precise. And uh, Paris is everything they said to be and more. Like uh, every piece of bread I've broken so far has been better than the last one. Uh, can't sing the same praise about the subway system. Uh, I hope you guys can relate with me. I, I don't know why, like, why, why, why do they give such bad directions? Like, I thought I agree with bad directions, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, all the talks today have been really fresh, uh, really intuitive, and the energy on this day zero has been more useful than any other KubeCon I've been to so far. And what we're going to talk, talk about today is uh, related to the zero interest rate phenomena. H how many of you guys have heard about this before? The zero interest rate phenomena, ZIRP, yeah, a lot of chat about this on pretty much everything that's happening today is because of this last two years. And uh, this phenomenon is truly over. It flew by like an innocent night of drinking. And ever since, there has been an increased focus on cost optimization going hand in hand with performance optimization. As companies consolidate their businesses, offerings, and financials, every penny spent needs to be accounted for more and more now. And this talk is about how Razorpay saved upwards of $500,000 on their observability and infra tooling spent by switching open source vendors and implementing best practices, which aren't as intuitive as they may seem to be. Uh, I hope that a lot of fast growing teams today here can identify similar patterns uh, to find money where there seemingly is none. So uh, yeah, nice to meet you all again once. Uh, I'm Shubham and I lead developer relations at Zenduri. This is uh, Sandeep. Hey, hi everyone. Nice meeting you here. Uh, I'm lead DevOps at uh, Razorpay. Razorpay is uh, India's biggest uh, fintech organization. You can call it uh, Stripe for India. Uh, it kind of uh, uh, take care of uh, 80, uh, close to 80 million of merchants uh, transaction on day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, that's all me. Yeah. And once again, I lead developer relations at Zenduri, an advanced incident response and alerting platform. Uh, Together, we've helped teams uh, you know, set up their cloud automation and incident response processes uh, across the world. So uh, what is this talk really going to be about? So firstly, we'll start with discussing the scale at which observability costs really start to pinch hard. It's a place where ReserPay personally has been for a while. And we'll then talk a little bit about how even experienced and proficient teams can you know, find themselves stuck in this spiral. Uh, and let infra and observability costs spiral away. And then we'll just take some time and cover each pillar of change that Razorpay uh, undertook, talking about their experiments with tools like Fluentbit, Hypertrace, Victoria Metrics, EVPF, and a lot of some other fun stuff, all in the spirit of getting some more bang out of the money. So a few, a few of you might think that, hey, uh, you know, any proficient team with cloud cost alerting and uh, good architecture in place would not be in a situation like this. However, reducing costs in areas like observability and associate tooling is often something you would not get 100% right while you're shaping these pillars up. So I'll uh, walk you through, through a similar journey that a lot of these fast growing teams come through. Uh, firstly, the team rapidly expands as the business booms. Uh, infra orchestration kicks in into high gear, and the team is you know, currently at the pro uh, stage where they have a lot of problems, but these are good problems to have. They're happy about being there. Next, uh, as the consumption climbs and climbs and eventually peaks, uh, scaling issues can and do arrive even for teams that do plan for it a lot beforehand. And uh, at this fateful juncture, every high-performing team would prioritize meeting the evolving requirements of the customers and the internal developers. And this involves ensuring that everything that a team can do to boost developer productivity, making sure that you're reducing the time to market. And this involves over-provisioning, um, then choosing tools and any other uh, processes not uh, requiring a lot of deliberation, but on the focus of what's an easy way to get this reliability seeped into my uh, operations right now. Yeah, so I'll just give you a quick uh, overview of the scale uh, on ResorPay operates, basically. So we kind of uh, process 100 billion of uh, money uh, every year for our merchants. And then uh, we do close to 1,000 uh, TPS uh, uh, second. And uh, just to give you a brief, uh, PayPal, uh, maybe the last year they used to do uh, 
uh, across India, uh, uh, somewhere around 190 or one, uh, 193 uh, TPS. And Visa is capable of doing uh, somewhere around 1,700 TPS, basically. And <clears throat> so uh, we, we produce somewhere around uh, 100 TVs of uh, logs every day and 32 trillion of data points uh, per hour. And then uh, we have somewhere around close to a million pod, uh, half a million pod, basically, uh, spreading across uh, different, different en uh, environments, basically. So uh, we'll start uh, with the observability highs uh, uh, with the metrics, basically. And then uh, we'll go back, uh, go to logs, and then uh, traces. So uh, Victoria metrics is the uh, uh, holy solution or Her Majesty solution for us, uh, which kind of saved a lot of money for us in this. So when, when, when Razor Pay was very small, we used to have uh, Prometheus, uh, which, kind, uh, which could take care of our uh, metrics. Uh, but when we started scaling, it kind of becoming, uh, it, it was becoming the single point of failure for us, kind of. Uh, it was not high availability, and the only solution which we could have with the Prometheus is actually we need to scale it vertically, which kind of becomes uh, uh, more uh, de uh, dependent on DevOps engineers. We cannot have the high availability and the auto scaling with that, basically. And then we tried Thanos, uh, but the problem with Thanos is that actually it saves the uh, metrics in S3 and then uh, fetches, and then uh, it does the calculation in the memory, and it takes a lot of uh, back and forth and the network cost attached to it. So uh, we rejected or kind of uh, parted ways with Thanos, and then we came up with the Victoria matrix. And the flexibility which Victoria matrix uh, gives us is actually this. So Victoria Matrix, uh, we, we kind of uh, keep our data in the uh, tired format, which is kind of uh, insert, select, and then, then the storage format, basically. And then uh, we, we, we can even further it, uh, uh, tear it down in the uh, two more format, hot and cold, basically. So whichever is in use, we can just keep it in the co uh, hot format. And then uh, whichever is not used, or maybe uh, whatever we want to archive, we can just put it in the cold tire, basically. And, uh, Victoria Matrix uh, enables the Grafana uh, for the previous or the old data as well, which we can just uh, fetch from the Prometheus as well. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that's all about the Victoria Matrix. Yeah. So, just to give you a brief, uh, I mean, uh, how much cost is associated with it? Actually, we can have. Uh, Few VM VM instance uh, uh, VM insert instances uh, for it uh, for a uh, environment uh, typical uh, Kubernetes cluster which will be somewhere around five machines and then we can just put it on a spot so that will just cost us somewhere around uh, thirteen dollar and then uh, three more nodes uh, or two two or three more nodes on basically uh, for the storage and the select. And then that will be somewhere around three dollar, and the the total cost for a cluster, uh, uh, which will come somewhere around eighteen eighteen dollars basically. Yeah, and the the overall cost saving uh, with the Victoria metrics was somewhere around uh, uh, forty forty to forty five k basically, and this is this cost is clubbed with the uh, spot instances plus Victoria metrics, which used to cost us somewhere around. 60k a month, and then uh, it is down to 15k a month now. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah the, uh, the another factor in observability is the logs, basically. So we used to have uh, a different uh, logging platform, which used to kind of ingest the whole data, whichever we were uh, uh, producing. But uh, the main zipper uh, for the logs were the Fluent D at that point of time. And it used to have a lot of memory hogging. And then uh, if we kind of uh, visualize it with the 10,000 to 12,000 nodes at a time, it becomes somewhere around 200 to 300 machines only for the log shippers, basically. So we shifted from Fluent, bit, uh, Fluent D to Fluent Bit. And then uh, we made it a log shipper. And then Fluent D as our aggregator. And then we shifted our uh, logging platform as well, which kind of does not need uh, the date, whole data to be ingested uh, at the same point of time. So we moved to the different vendor, and then it saves the data into the 
uh, S3 uh, in parquet format. So whatever we need uh, at, at that time of troubleshooting or visualization, it, it fetches from S3, and then the cost is associated with uh, only the ingested data or the processed data. Uh, so, so once upon a time, we we kind of played with Hypertrace as well. Hypertrace is uh, kind of a cloud native solution for tracing. Uh, it saves the data in Pinot and Kafka. But uh, we 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 did 100% sampling, and the cost kind of skyrocketed for us somewhere around three million a month, uh, a year basically. So we have to uh, tear it down and then uh, move to some other solution and. That's when the uh, hypertrace became uh, really hyper for us. Yep, and uh, uh, the newest addition in the observability, uh, uh, the hot topic is kind of eVPF. We started playing with it, and and, and we have implemented an uh, eVPF-based network observability solution, uh, which kind of tracks the uh, kernel probe for us. Uh, using using K-props and gives us the exact visualization which can some uh, some of the tools in the market currently giving and it gives us the whichever uh, request or service is trying to connect outside world because uh, Razorpay being a uh, fintech organization it has to be compliant with the central bank regulation all the time so wh whichever service we need to move it uh, to internal network or external network it, it can be taken care uh, in in few minutes and uh, it it the the outside or inside communication is kind of associated with the net uh, net cost as well because if you are connecting outside it goes via net so significant amount of, of money has been saved uh, with the the cvpf tool we, we call it the egress i basically okay yeah. and uh so observability is only half the battle when things eventually break. Uh, all the shiny identity monitoring and observability systems that you have built would be for naught if your teams aren't able to remediate and prevent uh, business impacting disruptions. So uh, if you're asking how unoptimized incident response processes could cost your team's money, you're not the first one. Let me show you how. So Razorpay leaders notice that on an average, every engineer is spending more than three hours per month uh, attending incident uh, incident disruption calls, uh, which is around like 10% of their monthly bandwidth. So uh, in almost 75% of these cases, it was realized that the final root cause is something that was beyond their control. And all they needed to do, do was run a few SQL queries to reach to that point. And this is a very repetitive, repeatable uh, journey that could have been uh, undertaken without getting the engineers involved so, so frequently. The incident management team at Razorpay diligently monitors approximately 11,000 alerts per month, uh, out of which only 20, around 250 are P0 alerts, out of which only 110 end up being business impacting incidents. So you can kind of get an idea of the noise to signal ratio uh, when it comes to improper alerting practices. And uh, just your on-call engineers being involved in so many of these calls, uh, diving into something and realizing that you know this has already been fixed or is not something that you should be losing your sleep over, you know, costs you more in developer productivity than you can probably measure. So the solution to this predicament is as simple as your first thought, which is just minimize human intervention wherever possible. So Razorpay identified the top five alerts which are frequently occurring and built runbooks outlining st the steps to address these alerts. These were meticulously reviewed by senior engineers who've been here for a while and know that you know, automation can't just be thrown into a system uh, willy-nilly. You need to have some level of manual intervention there. And uh, they did this by using the tool of choice, which was Shoreline. And to minimize the noisy alerts, Razorpay implemented a service-based incident response uh, architecture. And they had set up very complex alert rules around their alert payloads, which they received from their monitoring tools. And this allowed uh, their incident alerting tool of choice, which was Zenduty, to deliver the, only the right alerts to the right people. So right now, they've already shed their alert load to around 3,000. And we're on the journey to bring it down to 1,000 alerts per month. And the outcome for this, well, uh, a significant 20% reduction in the time to isolate which is the time that they spent typically on finding out what the root cause per incident is. 
and uh, the automation of runbooks empowered these teams to swiftly pinpoint the time of isolation and in a remarkable span of less than five minutes. Like automations need to be relied upon as we move forward. It's, it is the future. A lot of more established teams try to avoid this fact, but the only way that you can maintain the same business velocity that you want to do in this current competitive market is relying on automations. And uh, a few final words before we leave you all. So don't rush into things because it might be uh, easy to drop in. Hypertrace was a good example uh, like for you guys. There's a lot of chatter about you know, s shifting vendors, exploring open source solutions. I'm saying this at a CNCF conference. But yeah, uh, do your du due diligence properly. And don't adopt something because you feel it's going to solve all your problems. There's nothing called like a silver bullet in today's world. Every open source is not free. So make sure that you're not correlating those, uh, those two facts. And uh, it's an uh, extremely competitive time in the market, as I said previously. And companies just can't afford any downtime. So while you're scaling up fast and fighting Goliaths, if you're one of those rapidly build fast, break fast teams, it's worth spending on extensive monitoring and alerting regardless of your scale or size. You know, it's rather, you would rather be at the scale razor pace where they've, you know, gotten over the hump and now they're fixing their uh, tiny mistakes rather than never gotten over the hump. So, and that is pretty much all the time. Thanks for listening, all of you guys. Uh, we can take a few questions if you have. And uh, yeah, I hope that the next few talks uh, do you guys justice for your attention? <laughs> Thank you so much.